Hi guys, welcome back to Corpse Potty Blood Drive. We are on chapter three, Pain. Aside from Satoshi and my other friends who shared the experience with me, there wasn't a soul in this world who believed that Psycho, Suzumoto, Morishigi, or Miss Yui ever existed. And this fact was really taking its toll on me, particularly in regards to Psycho. Are you all right, Naomi? Yeah, I'm fine. I can't keep worrying my mum forever. I flashed the brightest smile I could muster, though I'm still not sure he entirely bought it. I'm glad to hear it. Keep that chin up, and we'll get through this. Thanks. There's no need to be worried about me anymore, okay? That night, all I could do was manage to stand perfectly still and stare at my desk. I was mumbling something, but I don't even know what. My eyes had glazed over. It was like I was in a trance. Or maybe I just wanted to be. I'm not the one who's wrong. I'm not wrong. She's real. It's everyone else. It's everyone else who's crazy. Look at that drool coming off her chin there, Naomi. Those who refuse to believe another person, no matter what, can go burn in the fires of hell. If they could look into my heart, they'd see that it's the truth. My friend exists. My friend named Psycho. 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 I didn't even realise I actually started writing. I was at my desk now, writing words into a notebook. I'm burping, guys. I'm very sorry. <clears throat> Pardon me. Psycho. Psycho. I kept softly repeating her name to myself over and over again. The words started to sound foreign in my head, but I couldn't stop saying it. Almost like I'd forgotten her if I did. There was no other sound in the room, just the scratching of pencil on paper and the hushed sound in my voice. Just a word, psycho, in all its forms. Psycho? Psycho! My voice was getting firmer each time I said it, more demanding. And my writing was growing more feverish, more intense. Psycho. Finally, the pencil broke in half under the strain. I gripped it so hard that it stabbed into my palm. Blood began to drip onto the paper. My head was hanging limply, but the rest of my body had stiffened. If anyone had seen me, I bet I would have seen quite a sight. I could feel blood rushing to my head. My whole body quivered. Psycho. I raised my head from this vigil and realized tears were streaming down my face. What did she look like? My voice was strained, choking back a sentence I'd hoped I'd never say. There were countless pictures of Psycho drawn in my notebook, but in every one of them her face was blank. No. I held the notebook from my desk. Don't go. Don't leave me. Stay inside me. I don't want you to fade away. I don't want you to fade away! I slammed my hands on the desk with all my might and screamed as loud as my present constitution would allow. <laughs> I opened up the photo album on my phone. There was this nagging sensation in the back of my head that I'd overlooked something. <laughs> I was absolutely bawling at this point. My face was a mess. But I had indeed overlooked something. On the bottom right of my screen there was an icon for image modification. After a few menu selections, I found myself adjusting the picture's brightness. I kept hitting the button to turn it up, higher and higher. This is a bad idea. And slowly, at the very centre of the black void that replaced Psycho's face, I could see something begin to form. I felt like I was on the verge of an incredible discovery, filled with new hope I hadn't felt since just before the incident at Shinazaki Estate. There was still room to increase the brightness. There were still countless increments to go before I'd reached the phone's upper limit. I just kept pressing the button, over and over. Until finally, in the very centre of the would-be face, I could make out an extremely faint pattern that looked like freehand lettering, spelling the name Sachi in Hiranga. Hiragana. Was that right? Was I certain that's what it said? Instinctively, I placed the phone screen closer to my eye. 
The limited resolution made this pointless, but I didn't care. It was so close. I was beginning to lose focus, but it still wasn't close enough. I had to make sure that's what it said. I touched it to my forehead, as near my eye as I could get. At which point the letters latched into my cornea and literally attached themselves to my eye. <gasps> they were gone. They were there. No matter where I looked, I saw them. My vision had gone half white, obscured by the phantom letters. It took only a moment for the pain to end, and it was not an insignificant amount. Ah! Ah! I collapsed to the ground, hand ineffectually covering my eye. It was absolutely excruciating. That took around when my mum burst through the door. She looked like she was at the end of her rope. Like she didn't believe anything was wrong and I was probably just faking it. She was definitely more annoyed than concerned. With nothing more than a grunt, she grabbed me from behind, pinning my arm so I couldn't hurt myself. I fell backwards into my rear, unable to resist her restraint. It hurts. Mum, my eye really hurts. Medicine! I keep telling you to take your medicine. How many times do I have to say it before it sinks in? Mum, no, this is different. It hurts. It hurts. It hurts. My eye is on fire. Honestly, why can't you just behave yourself? Every day, the same thing. No, that's not it. My eye. Mum, it hurts. Huh? What about your eye? Let me see it. My left eye was glazed over with tears and had gone as bloodshot as an eye can get. And right on the cornea, white blister-like bulges were beginning to form, spelling out Sachi. There was no way my mum could ignore or dismiss that. She quickly stepped back in she quickly stepped back in shock. Finally, acknowledgement. Her breathing had quickened, but she didn't say a thing. She just left the room. Mum? It was too late. She was gone. Halfway across the house by the time I called out. Mum? Mum? Mum! I was sprawled out in the corner of my room like a giant stuffed bear. At some point I think I lost consciousness, but I'm still not sure, really sure. How long have I been sitting here? I was starting to feel a little less tense, a little more relaxed. I looked up. At the prospect of actually discerning details in my room, my left eye reacted with a sharp, intense shot of pain. My vision was still half white. My eye. God, it wasn't a dream, was it? It was real. I could feel the pain with every pulse. In every part of my body, it was almost unbearable. And yet... Mum? What happened to Mum? She'd run out of the room in shock, and obviously had been gone for quite some time. As sick as she was of me, I couldn't imagine she'd leave me to suffer without doing anything. I opened my bedroom door and slowly crept downstairs. I could hear a sound coming from the kitchen. A very specific, very peculiar sound, repeating at regular intervals. I did my best to sneak over to the doorway and peek in undetected. This is going to be incredibly bad. And what I saw was my mum sharpening a kitchen knife with intense focus. I had no idea what she planned to do with it, but an irrational fear washed over me. I slowly and silently sneaked my way over to the front entrance and I made sure not to peep. Not a peep could be heard from me until I was outside and away from the house. Kishinuma. Oh, Kishinuma! Like singing. It was a new morning, bright and early. Satoshi called out to me like I was 12 or something. I've been in this old, cheap, rundown two story apartment building for a long time now. It may not have been much to look at, but it felt like it had a certain charm. Satoshi was cradling a school bag in his arms as he waited for me in front of my room on the ground floor. On mornings, when he wasn't waylaid by Yuka, he could always drop by and invite me to walk to school with him. Originally he was doing it for my own good, so I'd always been known to ditch school a lot, and he figured a friendly offer like his would make attendance up a little. Admittedly, it worked. Yo. I finally made my entrance, or my exit, I suppose. And I'm pretty sure Satoshi must have already been confused, as I had on my shoulders one hell of a backpack, boasting a full-on survival kit, provisions, the works. Yeah, Satoshi was confused, alright. What's all that? 
You look like you're ready to hike up a mountain or something. I slowly carefully lowered the giant backpack to the ground. You should probably tell him about Ayumi going to Heavenly Host and the psychotic guy who embedded you in a wall. You know, you should probably mention that at some point. No, it's more like... Actually, before that, will you stop calling me out like you're my mum or something? I'm not in grade school anymore. Forget it. I actually have things to do, so I won't be going to school today. I'm, yeah, going for a mountain hike, like you said. Sorry to waste your time. Damn it, I didn't think I'd go down so easily last night. I remember taking a hit to the back of my head. Bad enough that I woke up in hospital or something. God, what the hell am I doing? Wait for me, Shinazaki. I'm coming. You're hiding something from me again. To be fair, you're the worst liar ever, Yushiki. I guess I wasn't all that convincing. But even still, I didn't expect Satoshi to see through me so quickly and easily. I stumbled under his glare. It was almost like I'd just been called out by a newborn baby. Or like a fawn. Dude was way too innocent for his own good. Can't fool them on his instincts. One of his biggest selling points, I guess. He's really good at empathising with others and helping them get over their problems. Come on, out with it. You can't hide anything from me. Uh, no, I, I guess not. Ayumi's face appeared in the back of my mind. She does like you said you didn't want Satoshi and the others to get involved any more than they already were, so I can't very well tell her I'm trying to find Aiko so I can go back there. <laughs> it's something to do with Heavenly Host, doesn't it? Huh? Damn, he was on today. That sure seemed like a yes reaction to me. How the hell did you know? Uh, God damn it, I'm terrible at this. I covered my mouth, but it was too late. I'd already confirmed it. Well, you got a bunch of talismans in your bag, for one thing. I did have a lot of talismans with me. I bought them at the convenience store and didn't exactly pack smartly enough to hide them. I certainly wasn't going to win any awards for stealth. Didn't that place fall apart, though? Please don't tell me it's still standing. No, we saw it collapse around us when we escaped. You saw it too. It's rubble. Satoshi stared deeply into my eyes, as if evaluating my answer for any possible deception. This time it seemed like I'd succeeded in fooling him. Huh. Yeah, you're right. Besides, Sachiko doesn't exist there anymore, so I can't imagine talismans would have any effect, and there's no way to get back there anyway. I exactly I was just going to do research I was just going to research it a little. I wasn't going to do anything dangerous. Okay, that's fine then. But if that changes, make sure you don't do it on your own. I've been telling Naomi the same thing. The worst thing in the world is not knowing what happened to someone. I thought I was in the clear, but Satoshi suddenly got a puzzled look on his face. He reached over to my backpack and pulled out one of the talismans I'd lazily stuck in the front pouch. Do these things really work? He was looking it over like an appraiser or something. Why wouldn't he just leave it alone? How should I know? People used to use sardine heads to ward off evil. This is probably just as effective. I yanked the talisman back out of Satoshi's hand and crammed it into the front pocket of my school blazer. Man, I haven't heard somebody talk about that in forever. You're like my old man sometimes, Yashiki. Shut up, damn it. Either way, first things first, you're going to school today. With this, Satoshi grabbed my sleeve. Huh? Why? Because your attendance is low enough already and Mrs. Kwan said she'd help you make it up before class today. Probably with a quiz or something. I don't give a crap about that. They can hold me back a year if they have to. This is not the time for school. I take it, this has something to do with Shinozaki, then. Satoshi knows you only too well, dude. Was this guy psychic? He hadn't been wrong all morning. Whatever happened, it'll wait. You can tell me all about it at school. Come on, let's go. You can leave the backpack right here. It seems Satoshi wasn't going to take no for an answer. Yo, seriously, Satoshi, stop. I get it, okay? Just come on. Get your hands off me. You want me to be honest with you? I'll be honest with you. Sure you will. Come on! Satoshi, Kishinuma, good morning. 
Good morning. Hey. <laughs> you're lucky. You're the lucky one, Kishidima. Getting off with just a 15 minute quiz. I hope you're ready for it. Whatever. Yoshiki had been made aware of the seriousness of his situation. I seriously don't have time for this, you know. But here I am. Let's get it over with so I can get the hell out of here. It was great of you to come. Now let's be off to the classroom, shall we? I'm fine right here. Just bring me the quiz. Don't be stupid, Yoshiki. Look, there's no time to argue. There's some place I absolutely have to be. I slipped my hand into my pocket and took out a mechanical pencil. If they were going to force me to do this, I need to shave off every second I could. As I removed the pencil, the talisman I shoved in there earlier fell to the ground. I need to hurry and find that spirit item fanatic or else Shinazaki could be. Spirit item fanatic? Are you talking about Aika Niwa? Yeah, that's her. Did something happen to Shinazaki? Wait, are you trying to tell me she somehow went back to Heavenly Host? Yes! Why didn't you say so sooner? Because you weren't listening to me. All we did was yank, yank, yank on my damn shirt. What's this about I? A heavenly host? Oh, it, it's nothing. Wait. I? Huh. Come to think of it, your last name is Niwa. That's right. The person you just mentioned, Aiko Niwa, is my sister. I call her I. Miss Kwan, I'd like you to meet with Aiko. Do you know where I can find her? I'd like to meet with Aiko. Do you know where I can find her? Huh, at this hour I'd imagine she's in school, though she was acting rather strangely last night. Do you live with her, Miss Kwan? I do. So this could... So this would have been after Shinazaki and I met with her. How was she acting exactly? Like, what was strange about it? Well... I, uh... I may have said something about you. Huh? <laughs> this is rather awkward. Uh, okay. And then what? Well, let's see. She was holding two small blue stones in her hand. Almost cradling them, in fact. Bingo. That's it. She had another pair. But this is our chance, Miss Kwan. Do you know for sure that Aiko went to school today? She looked rather perturbed as she left the house last night, and she wasn't home when I got up this morning. I made some breakfast and waited for her, but I wound up eating it all. Yushiki. If she used the stones on her own, that's the end of it. There's no way to go after Shinazaki. Yushiki, wait! Thank you, Miss Kwan. I'll be sure to bring him back. All right. As Satoshi turned to leave, he caught a glimpse of Nakashima, sliding on the school roof on the wrong side of the guardrail, looking tired and worn. There was no spark in her eyes, no awareness. It looked almost as if she was sleepwalking. Naomi? This is bad. The music doesn't really suit the scene here. I tried to pick myself up and look around. But I could only move my neck. Everything was dark, and the only sound of my surroundings was an unpleasant, vaguely organic noise filling my ears. I felt in some way restrained. What's going on? As my eyes adjusted to the dim light of the room, I could see that I was blanketed by red flesh. It was as if the floor had come to life and was absorbing me into its collective. This is disgusting. God. I focused my strength and was finally able to break free from my bindings. Bits of red matter flying away from my body as I tore through it to freedom. I was absolutely soaked, however, with a strange, vicious, strange, 
viscous fluid and chunks of meat were clinging fast to my skin and clothes. The blanket of flesh on the ground was now bubbling out a murky red liquid from all the spots I'd torn in my escape, as violently as if a faucet had been turned on to full. What the hell was that? Oh. I was in tears, trying as hard as I could to wipe the viscera from my body. As I watched, however, a chunk I'd been trying to shake free from the back of my hand just dissolved away. Aside from the murmurs of the flesh blanket, the room was deathly silent and lit only by a faintly blue glow streaming in from a nearby window. This is still heavenly heist for sure. Oh, fuck. An entity resembling Mai was charging at me from the depths of the darkness. Okay. It was all in my head. A flashback. She wasn't after me now, but she definitely had been. That was really Suzumito, wasn't it? The tears were pouring out my eyes by the point. I could do nothing to hold them back. Can I really do it? Can I bring them back? Can I even really find the Book of Shadows in this endless darkness? Maybe I shouldn't have come. I crouched on the floor to gather my thoughts and noticed that my cell phone was lying on the ground beside me. And that wasn't all. A circular design was carved in the floor. Perfectly round as if traced by compass, with the fleshy girl I'd been trapped in, more or less centred inside. What in the... Actually, come to think of it. Wasn't I about to get attacked by some kind of monster with an axe? I checked myself over for injuries. There were none. Or at least none caused by an axe. How am I still alive? Ah, I guess I must have skinned my knee when I tripped. If memory serves, and if the floor plan hasn't changed too much, the infirmary should be right here. Maybe I can catch my breast there. My breast? My breath there for a minute. This was never a good room in the previous games. Never. Ah! The hard wooden clops of my footsteps gave way to softer, squishier series of plops. Taken aback by this sudden change, I looked down, terrified at what I might be walking in. As I feared, whatever it was looked awfully biological. Huge swathes of the floor were coated in what looked like internal organs, moving and swaying and pulsing in a sick rhythm. This is really disturbing. What is it? I raised my foot and found a seaweed-like substance that closely resembled a network of blood vessels stuck to the bottom of my shoe. If there was anything like this at Heavenly Host before, it's like the whole school is being swallowed by something. I wonder, what are those? They look like the occult symbols we found in the basement of the Shinazaki estate. Only different. A little more demonic, I guess? Whatever they are, I'm getting the shivers, just looking at them. <sighs> Calm down, Miyumi. Just focus on what you have to do. There's a good chance that this girl has the Book of Shadows. And she looks a lot like Yuki. If I talk to her and tell her what's happening, I'm sure she'll give me the book. Just before I passed out, I thought I saw her, but she had a very different aura than before. I should leave a candle here. Maybe Miss Soto will see it. Hopefully Miss Soto will see it. Mad matches. I wonder if there are any nearby. Well, it's the same point, obviously. I'm sorry I'm saving in lots of new slots, but it's because I haven't had a chance to export my files so far, and I want to make sure everything recorded okay before I overwrite things. Bandage obtained, and we have a body here. Kazumi Fujishita succumbed to shock and removal of spine. Catchphrase was, in this world of interesting things, let's be interesting. 
There's one of those statues there that removes darkness. How do I tell my darkness? Let me have a look at my uh, menu a second. I need to make sure I know what's going on. It doesn't really say, does it? I guess I just slowly notice it. Like, I'm going to gamble and say my darkness isn't very high at the moment. Oh. Match is obtained. Gonna try and not use this as that much. Wooden doll here. Leave it be for now. We'll come back here if we need to. I guess we're gonna go on a bit of an adventure and probably die. This is blood and it's fresh. There should be stairs leading to the third floor over that way. Ow. I saw it, but I was too late to react to it. I just want to have a look around here first. I'm going the wrong way first, guys, because that's always what you should do. Choked on and vomit. Not doing a very good job of uh, not getting hit by things horribly here. The longer you live, the more other people die. Get rid of that tripwire, please. This might all be a very bad move right now, but still. Wilfully gave himself to the school after being enticed by the world of blood and flesh. Oh, this place is fucking huge. There is literally shit everywhere right now. Bled out from glass shrapnel wounds across the entire body. How much health have I lost since I uh, got hit twice? Quite a bit. Like, those traps are bad. I really need to avoid them more than I had them. No running in the halls. Well, that's a dead end. There is like a closet this way, right? Yeah, there's a closet there to hide in if I need to. I try not to waste my light. Let's go to this tripwire. Holy shit, there's, there's so much to explore right now. Hopefully I can find more batteries and shit so I won't run out that much. I'm so hungry. Probably food. It's a strawberry milk flavoured steam bun. Those are my favourite. What's the expiration date? Tomorrow. Should I eat it? Or maybe Masoto left it behind for me. I'll take it with me. Can't have to take it with me at least. I'll save it for later. Jesus Christ. 
Christ, this place is more of a fucking mess than I ever remember it being. Okay, so succumb to fatigue after wandering school, calling out for parents. I mean, everyone dies horribly in Heavenly Heist, don't they? I feel that if I ate it, I probably would have died, so it's best to have the food with me for now. Besides, someone might need it more than I do, you know what I mean? That's not real. Let's check this other way first. Nice little dead end. Nope. All these doors open, which is worrying. Worrying as fuck, as far as I'm concerned. Oh, it's his room. Great. Am I going to die opening this? The infamous closet? Naho, Sonoki, and Kukibiki's bodies are most likely still inside. It's probably best not to disturb them. Getting in that room took so long in the original. Do you remember, guys? Like, getting to that point where we had that revelation about their bodies. And now it's like, yeah, no big deal. I don't think the dude with the axe is the custodian either. Door there was locked. Alright, this is all a dead end. So I check, guys, and it looks like saving does fully heal you, which is obviously a great plus here. We cleared out that bottom bit, so we're going to go now follow the blood trail to the north. I really hope I don't run out of... That's when Mayu died, right? Yeah. Massive bloodstain, but no longer Mayu herself. The desks have been moved and the trial continues here, so the monster must have gone upstairs. Guess that's where we're going then. To our probably certain doom. But that's okay. I'm really glad there was a door there. I was a little bit worried there wasn't after all that, but... Still not finding many batteries. So I'm a little worried. Fucking hate those holes. Fucking hate them. Every door I open, I, I feel like a sense of impending dread. A name tag on the corpse is moving. Hanged and stabbed. Unclear which offence resulted in death. Not sure I'd be opening all these, but still. And the last one won't open. And I walked into the spikes like an idiot. It's really hard to see. Without your torch, you're kind of stumbling around in a certain death trap. But I want to preserve the batteries too, because they ran out for Ico so quickly. Okay. Door is lattice with human hairs holding in place. There's no way through. The bloodstain leads here, which means Yuki is most likely inside. Along with the axe-wielding giant. Great. Oh, we're getting a phone call. How lovely. I don't know this number. Hello? Hello? Um, help. Oh, it's Misito? And he's laughing. 
Still alive, huh? You. Where are you? Why are you such a fucking wuss? What? All you ever think about is how much you regret everything. If there was a voltage meter attached to me, it would have spiked at that moment. Never before has one person been able to anger me so quickly and so effortlessly. What the hell is your problem? How can you just leave me by myself like this? Tell me where you are right now. No need to get so pissy. I'm looking for you too. We'll run into each other here at some point. Huh? That's the best answer you can give? This is Heavenly Host Elementary. It's a jumbled mess of dimensions. We may never see each other again for all you know. Oh yeah? That's true. I'm the one with the stones. So if push comes to shove, I guess you'll wind up getting left behind. Forget about that for a minute though. Have you seen all the demonic looking symbols and markings here? I'm pretty sure I have. Those writings amplify some kind of power throughout the entire Nirvana. Something big. Some kind of power? What do they signify exactly? I'm not really sure on the details, but I can tell you that they're black magic. The kind used by the Martubas. There's definitely something going on in this school, so be careful. What? You'll be fine though, we'll meet again somehow or another. And then you can use these stones and head back to reality. Hey! It wasn't exactly an ideal spot to cut off in a conversation. I panicked and tried to call back. Be careful, he says. Be careful of what? I read the other number over and over again. More times than I could count, but Misoto never picked up. Misuto? His name is Misuto, not Misoto, it's Misuto. Urgh. You gave me so little to go on. Psycho, how are you? We used to eat lunch here together, all the time, remember? I held my hand out in front of me and looked down at my phone. All my attention was on the little glowing screen. My inbox was filled with old emails from Psycho. It's like time is frozen for me, you know? Without you by my side, I'm scared. Too scared to take even a single step. Stretched out beneath my feet, I could see the floor, roof of the connecting corridor on the first floor. This was a five-story school building. There'd be no surviving a fall from this height. I want to see your face again. Just one more time. I don't want to forget you. Naomi! Nakashima. Don't do it! Satoshi? Miss Kwan? You really scared me there for a second. Ah. Naomi! Nakashima! That was really close. <sighs> you thought I was gonna jump? Uh -huh. Sorry, I wasn't planning on it, honest. You certainly gave us quite a start. What were you doing out there? Psycho and I used to hop the railings here. See, over there? We'd lie down on top of that power box together and I just wanted to remember those days. To remember her. Oh, okay. Thank God it was just a misunderstanding. Nakashima, is something wrong with your eye? It happened last night. May I take a look? My cornea was etched with indistinct white dots. The untrained eye, they probably looked like a random blistering, but on closer inspection, one could easily make out they were actually letters. Is this from a curse, perhaps? Ah, Miss Kwan, are you familiar with things like that? Yes, you could say that. My company has had some dealings with this sort of thing. May I ask what happened last night? I was looking at a picture of my phone, really close, and the letters got stuck to my eye. Was it a spirit photograph then? Do you still have it? I wasn't sure I was ready to show this strange woman a photo of Psycho, who was, by all rights, non-existent in this world. I considered it for a moment, but ultimately decided the risks outweighed any possible reward. Ah, uh, no, I don't have it anymore. I see. That's good. Photographs depicting things which don't belong on this plane will have a negative effect on the viewer when seen, so it's best not to save them. Things that don't belong on this plane, huh? Now, it's obvious Miss Kwan didn't intend this as an insult. Those of us who'd survived the heavenly host ordeal couldn't help but have our hearts sink at the harshness of the phrase. Instantly, my depression intensified. Here, I have some eye drops and an eye patch. It might be a little uncomfortable, but do keep it on. 
If it's just a regular infection, it should heal up by no time. Satoshi's eyes widened as Miss Kwan pulled out all manner of shocking objects from her bag, searching for the eye drops, an eye patch she apparently just happened to have on hand. He also seemed transfixed by the company logo emblazoned on the side of her bag. PL Promotions Co. Inc. Thank you, Miss Kwan. You should go home for the day, Nakashima, and get some rest. If you don't, you might inadvertently take in something else. Huh? Miss Kwan clearly knew more than she was letting on. I was a little taken back by this whole encounter. The expression on her face was not that of someone playing a ground, nor that of a teacher, but that of a professional giving a deathly serious prognosis. It reminded me of the look Shinazaki would give whenever she sensed danger. Reading between the lines, it was evident that Miss Kwan's sensitivity to the supernatural was well honed. Satoshi and I were both looking at her somewhat agape, and then I realised in that moment that this was someone we could trust. I'll walk her home then. Oh, but you have class, don't you? I'll be happy to see her off safely, if that's alright with you, Nakashima. May I escort you? No. Pardon? No! I will not go home! What happened, Naomi? I won't. I just won't. Not there. My mum's got a massive fucking big knife and she tried to kill me and I don't want to talk about it, but I probably should. I should probably tell the fucking police because my mum's mental. Naomi. Miss Kwan's eyes moved downward a bit, surveying my body. I wasn't sure what was going on at first, but then I realised she was observing the state of my uniform. Namely that it was a mess of wrinkles, as if it hadn't been changed out of for a far longer than one would expect. Nakashima, could it be that you've run away from home? Perhaps you've been on the run since last night's incident? If I go home, if I go home she'll give me medicine, and I'm scared. I probably sounded like a little girl at the doctor's office, frightened of the needle. This may have been the first time Satoshi realised just how much Psycho's loss still bothered me. I was in shock and denial, and I'd been trying so hard to play it off. Naomi. Alright, I understand. You'll come to my place then, and I'll contact your parents from there. Let's stop by the classroom and pick up your bag. Then we'll be off, okay? And Satoshi, I want you to do your best in today's classes. Um, Naomi? I hope you feel better. Thanks. Hmm, Miss Kwan seems quite nice. Yoshiki's sneaking around by himself, Shinazaki's in pain, and Naomi's suffering just as much. Why do I feel so fucking normal? At this rate, we're all going to lose our minds. I have to do something. I'm sorry, Miss Kwan. Hang in there, Yoshiki. This was no time for schoolwork. He must have gone to Polo Polonia Academy High School to meet with Ikoniwa. Who's already in fucking Nightmare World. Come on now, Mizuki. I understand those two were your best friends, but you mustn't lose faith. Their families placed missing persons reports, so I'm absolutely certain both Sonoki and Ui will be back before you know it. Keep that chin up. Yes, Mr. Shimizu. As soon as the teacher was out of sight, the girl's eyes narrowed. She stared after him with a look of utter contempt. This had to be Magari Mizuki. Why are all adults such dumb shits? She followed this statement with a sigh and seemed to say, I'm much better than that person. And then bingo, from her skirt pocket she withdrew the Ever After Stones. If easing people's worries is all it took to make the world spin, we'd never have to lift a finger now, would we? She was coyly playing with the stones as she said this, fitting them together at different angles in her hands. Yes, can I help you? She hadn't turned around, she just somehow seemed to sense my presence. I stepped out from behind the bench, into her line of sight. Magari then flashed me the iciest stare I'd ever seen. I'm not usually intimidated by that sort of thing, but even I had to really make a concerted effort not to look away. I'm um, hi, you're Magari, right? I heard from the other students that you're acquainted with Aiko Niwa, as well as the pretty famous girl named Naho. Why, uh, do you have those stones exactly? Shouldn't they be in Aiko Niwa's possession? I figured I might as well just jump in the whole hog, though not without bracing myself first. I knew that question couldn't exactly leave me anywhere good. 
And sure enough, her response was almost immediate. I'll kill you. Uh, what? Pursue this line of questioning, and I'll fucking kill you. This is none of your business, so how about you leave now? Or shall I call a teacher and report that there's a trespasser? She certainly wasn't messing around. Nonetheless, I come too far to back down now. Despite her threats, I knew I had to keep pushing. Are you going to Heavenly Host, the Nirvana? And if so, could you take me with you? Huh? I have a friend who's there right now, and... Before I could get another word, a giant scythe literally appeared in her hand out of nowhere. And just like that, I couldn't move a muscle. She had me completely restrained. I'm seriously going to kill you. Forget your friend, and get lost. This is your last chance. The blade glinted majestically in the light of the sun. But as I looked up at it, it was her other hand that really did me in. Using the heel of her palm, she flung me backwards with an incredible force. There was a loud, sudden metallic sound as my back struck the bench behind me. Her form was unbelievably precise. Ugh. My momentum caused me to pivot over the backrest and flop down onto the ground below. I became acutely aware of every muscle and every bone in my body as a jolt of intense pain fired through all of them. The wind wasn't just knocked out of me, it was obliterated. I gagged and choked for a while longer, but eventually regained the ability to breathe normally, and with it, my composure. I forced myself up with some effort, but Magari was nowhere to be seen. Damn it! Seriously, where- what is she? Her and that Misuto bastard. I was in complete daze. I'd always thought of myself as being able to hold my own in the fight, but this was twice now that I'd been laid out with almost no effort. Why am I so weak? I had to find a way to open this door. Okay, so we need to find something to open it. Oh, matches. Right? Okay. Not matches, I guess. Oh, fuck. What's happening now? What is that? This heavenly host is definitely different from the one I remember. Outside the window, there was some sort of bizarre statue clearly visible in the pale blue light. Miss Yui, Suzumoto, Shinohara, Mushigi. If any of you are still here, please lend me your strength. I swear I'll do everything I can to bring you all back. Huh, remember those? They're my scary time candles. This is to let you know I'm here. And this is where we're going to leave this installment, guys. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Corpse Party. The Blood Drive will continue with Naomi here in the school very, very soon. Otherwise, I guess I'll see you guys later. Have a wonderful fucking day. And uh, if you enjoyed the video, remember to leave a like and a comment. All that usual good stuff. And I'll see you really soon for more Blood Drive. We're probably about halfway through Chapter 3, I'm guessing. See you later. Bye for now.